Hello and welcome to the FSF Podcast Live Edition. Hello and welcome to the FSF Podcast, the show that makes you wish the memory erasing devices in the movie Men in Black weren't fictional. Oh, hey, look, I got a co host. Ta da! And he's muted. He's a muted. I got a co host, but he's a muted co host. He's talking. His lips are moving furiously over there on the other side. This is fantastic. If you're listening to the audio replay, this is probably the best 30 seconds of comedy I've had in a little while. This is fantastic. So it's just like, it's like Charlie Brown's teacher. But oh, we have a voice. This is good. Yeah, we can hear you now. Well, as you were saying, I had a memory flash. Uh, it was like Charlie Brown's teacher. The lips were moving, but but no sound was coming out. It was fantastic. Is that just what your face looks like all the time? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> You've talked with my wife, okay. All right, but before we get into tonight's show, we need to say our thanks to our show partner, Level Up Sabres. Let's roll that nerdy footage. Doing it. Links for Level Up Sabres can be found in our show notes and our comment sections. And don't forget, this saber is better than a stick. Because that's what Master Allen says, and it's legit. And so we also remind you that the link is right there. It's on the screen. You guys can use that as you see fit. And that helps our show by you buying one of these awesome Level Up Sabres like I have here in my hand uh, that are supremely well-built and in very durable, by the way. I'd like to point that out. Uh, Your purchasing that helps us to continue to grow. We get a cut of that, and it helps us to offset our monthly costs in order to put this show on for you. If, for whatever reason, though, you don't want to do that, and you think, well, you know what, that's not just not for me, well, then we have another way for you to help the show. You can always buy us a coffee. We take the proceeds there, same thing. That helps offset our monthly bills, and we get to have fun uh, that way. And if you're watching on YouTube, please do what the banner says down below. Please remember to click like and subscribe. So at the beginning of this show tonight, we are sitting at 699 subscriptions. It'd be really cool to hit 700, you know, before the end of the show. No pressure. Even cooler Uh, at 1,000. Well, at 1,000, you get to see Nick and I dance around with lightsabers doing the uh, uh, Frankenstein dance from Young Frankenstein. So putting on the Ritz. So, yeah, that's going to happen. (laughs) <laughs> it's definitely going to be problematic in a lot of ways, uh, but also should be funny for the majority of you. So, um, but yeah. So anyway, uh, if you have an opportunity to please click the like and subscribe, it helps us to continue to grow. We've got some at the end of the show, we'll talk about in just a few minutes. Um, we've got some awesome guests coming up, some pre-recorded interviews from people out in the sci-fi and pop culture world that you guys are for sure going to want to be well in attendance for i guess maybe that is that the phrase i'm looking for listen to and watch how about that you're going to want to be in attendance well let's go with it yeah you want to be in attendance for it what the hell let's go with that one i'll give you a hint (laughs) for one of them strawberries okay i get the hint now it took me a second and the sad (laughs) thing is i'm the one i was actually in the interview and i'm still sitting here going huh (laughs) Say what now? All so, right. So, you have yeah, more to say. Uh, one of our first guests on the list is not here yet. So, just go ahead and, and, and introduce oh. our other two. So, we have Robert and Gio from the Science Fiction Remnant. Welcome, guys. Hello. I, I thought this is where the party was at. <laughs> I just had to make fun of Blake. <laughs> Oh, I love it. <laughs> How you doing, guys? As soon as Good. as soon as your head popped on the screen and you're doing, 
I was like, I know exactly what he's doing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can I get rid of that lunch? Because I did that many times in my show, too. <laughs> uh, well, hey, guys, this is Robert and Gio from Science Fiction Remnant. Uh, they have become good friends of ours, and we've we've worked closely with these guys on a couple different things. Uh, they've been here on our show. They've been kind enough to, kind enough to have us and on their show and put up with us over there. And uh, you you may have noticed, too, that every Wednesday when we do Crossover Connection, uh, mm. these guys were actually our very first Crossover Connection. Oh. And, and we shared out their episode first, and we've had a lot of fun with these guys. So uh, hoping that you guys uh, know that as well. Oh, we just got a subscriber. We just hit 700. Who's your daddy? Man, I'm telling you, I was I posted the, this link right now, like in maybe minimum 10 to 15 groups. There you go. <laughs> well, awesome. At least one we're gonna get. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's not so bad. Hey, actually, we're at 701. Woo-hoo. Welcome to the dark Woo-hoo. side. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome our fellow nerds. We're glad you're here. Hope you guys are enjoying the show so far. But hey, before we go too much farther, Robert Geo, why don't you guys take a minute, tell everybody about your show. Uh, where they can find it and why you guys are just so doggone cool. I'm the feisty one and he's the nice one. Robert, you're the organized one, so you can give better details. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we're basically that conversation that you have on your way to a Comic Con. We like to talk about all kinds of sci fi properties. Uh, doesn't matter where they come from. Um, it could be a movie, TV show, books, games, doesn't matter. And our show is Science Fiction Remnant, could be found everywhere and if you don't find us somewhere reach out to me i'll make sure it gets there it's all across the galaxies yeah yeah um yeah because it used to be that you guys were just an audio and then you guys switched correct and then and then you started doing uh you're releasing the youtube episodes about what three to four weeks later after the audio episode airs is that correct? Yeah, that, that's correct. That, or initially, we wanted to do a live, but it dis- didn't really work. So the way that we turned out for season two is uh, we basically released the episode exactly a month after the audio episode releases. So if you hear a bunch of like shenanigans going on and you don't know what's going on, yeah, go back to YouTube and, and watch. You're going to see Captain <laughs> Chaos doing this thing. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh Let's see. Oh, I mean, uh, they can catch me on TikTok being a total clown, too. Oh, yes. There you go. Absolutely. All right. So, yeah. So, guys, make sure you guys go out and follow Science Fiction Remnant. Give them the love they deserve. We, uh, like I said, we've been doing a lot with these guys. And, and Hi King Azu Okra. O- okra? Okra? I hope I, I know I'm slaughtering your name, and I am so sorry. But uh, King, we'll just call you King. How about that, King? Uh, welcome. And uh, he was, he, I believe, I was our 700th subscriber. So, nice. Very cool. Awesome. Um, Thank you, man. I know where he's yeah. coming from, man. Thank yeah, that's you. very cool. We do appreciate it. And uh, we're glad to have you here and hope you enjoy the conversation as we get going. Uh, while we're waiting for Nick to sort out his internet issues, because uh, Geo has shared those across the internets and <laughs> uh, has <laughs> and has uh, uh, blessed Nick with jumpy internet, apparently. So I think he's rebooting, and resetting everything. I'm proud of He'll be back in. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, so, oh yeah. Hey, Jason. Yeah, we are watchless tonight. Kathleen and needed a night off and, uh, John was under the weather, so he was not planning on, uh, filling her seat for tonight. So hopefully we'll see them in the comments and making fun of me as I strive to learn a little bit more about Star Trek tonight. So, uh, but yeah, but that's our topic for tonight. As, as the, the note said, we want to talk about Star Trek in the prime directive. Now, to set kind of set the stage here, I am, uh, and good evening to you as well, Jason. So, I am the new, the newbie to, to Star Trek. I am the noob. I may have made fun of Star Trek my entire life, said I would never ever watch it, um, that it was dumb, that it was boring, and now that I'm a little bit older, uh, I'm 46 years old. Now that I'm a little bit older, I actually see a lot of the the sound logic of things, and it. it there have been episodes that I have watched, even of the original series, even though I can't stand Captain Kirk, still can't. That's going to be an issue um, for some. He's a provocateur. But, I mean, it's his nature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just can't can't swing with him. I tried, man. I just <laughs> can't do it. Uh, so I bailed on the original series and jumped over to the next generation. And I'm I'm uh, about five episodes in, and I have we have a Nick. He's back. 
And Maybe? so possibly for a little bit at least. <laughs> so so yeah, so so the nature of tonight's conversation is I have no interest in bagging on Star Trek. I'm I'm like I said, I'm coming into this. I have some questions about the Prime Directive. I have some confusion about the Prime Directive. I have a specific example that I want to mention to you guys. And I'm hoping to not only get comments from Robert and Gio, of course, because they're here on screen. But if you have comments about about anything that we're saying, whether you agree, you disagree, whatever, go ahead and put it in the in the comment section here. We'll put it up on the screen and we'll try and talk about it for as much as we can. By the way, uh, Nick, Jason says hello to the stash. Hello. So. All right. So the question I put out for tonight's live show was, is the prime directive a good rule or guideline and does it make sense? So what I'd like to do is it's about and Nick sent this to me a couple days ago, but I'm just going to briefly read the prime directive in its entirety. It's two paragraphs long. And that way everybody understands what we're talking about. Uh, and not just me going, golly, I don't understand this. Okay. So here it is. You're going to tend to make us all confused. <laughs> that is the intention. Yes. Cause if I'm going to be confused, I want everybody to be confused. Some I don't want to be the only dummy sitting here day. going exactly. <laughs> I don't want to be the only dummy sitting here going, well, how come you guys understand it? So, all right. <laughs> the prime directive prohibits Starfleet personnel and spacecraft from interfering in the normal development of any society and mandates that any Starfleet vessel or crew member is expendable to prevent violation of this rule as the right of each sentient species to live in accordance with its normal cultural evolution is considered sacred, no Starfleet personnel may interfere with the normal and healthy development of alien life and culture. Such interference includes introducing superior knowledge, strength, or technology to a world whose society is incapable of handling such advantages wisely. Starfleet personnel may not violate this prime directive even to save their lives and or their ship unless they are acting to right an earlier violation or an accidental contamination of said culture. This directive takes precedence over any and all other considerations and carries with it the highest moral obligation. So that is the prime directive. So here's my example. And here's where I'm confused. Like the worst example ever, but okay. Nick, don't make me kick you out of the, out of the chat tonight. <laughs> we haven't even gotten started yet. You're like, fine, whatever. Uh, hey, there we go. Hey, Jesse from Crusher Convo. Uh, if you remember last week, Jesse was on. And, uh, oh, you're not late, Jesse. You're right on time. We're just getting into the prime directive. Go ahead and duck. Because uh, so, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I will be from time to time. So here's my here's my example. Uh, now, I am also putting this out there with a very large grain of salt because everybody I've talked to has told me that this may not be the best example and that even the cast was not happy with this example of the prime directive. Nick's over there shaking his head like, yes, why are we talking about this? Anyway, so here it is. And Jesse has already begun to duck. <laughs> smart. <laughs> All right. So in ep season one, episode four, there's an episode called it's actually episode three. Is it? It is because I like, I went to go watch it today, and I'm like, that's not is episode, it episode three. Yes, it is. What's episode four? I don't know. I didn't watch that. All right, so it's episode three. <laughs> it's called Code of Honor. All right, so in the in the course of this uh, show, uh, Tasha Yar, the head of security, is kidnapped by the 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 group of people that had had transported onto their mm -hmm. ship. Uh, with their own transporter, they did not use the Starfleet's transporter. They transported onto the ship. So apparently, and obviously, they have a depth of technology, and they may not have the most accurate technologies and anything and everything, but they did have transporter technology. And you know, they have a vaccine that nobody else in the world has or in the universe has, and, and they need it to correct this illness, this infection that's going on. Uh, but this the the head honcho, I don't know if he was a king or whatever, but he's like really enamored with Yar and <clears throat> he makes it so they can abduct her and bring her, bring her back to his, his country, his, you know, his, his planet. Picard is ready to go down and, and get Yar back. And then he's told, we can't do that. It's a violation of the prime directive to go and get back our person. I don't think he actually said that though. 
Well, just let me tell my story, okay? Just okay, Nick. Okay, fine. Finish. <clears throat> okay, but they waited. Regardless, regardless, they waited like twenty four hours before they did anything. And then when they get down to the planet and try and reason with these people to please let our people go, he forces Yar to participate in a duel to the death with his first wife for a man that she wasn't interested in and had no interest in being married to. And in order to to secure her freedom. So instead of just going down and, and taking her back. That happened. Oh my! So what, that sounds like a like a reality show. Marry him or kill him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So my question is, how does the Prime Directive, based on what we read, is the does the Prime Directive is that what's really holding them back from going doing that, or was that just a plot point at that point uh, for the show, and just confusing the the daylights out of me? Because coming from a Star Wars background, and I'm 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 putting this all out on the table, coming from a Star Wars background. There's no way that Han Solo or Anakin Skywalker or Luke, for that matter, would have sat there and let his friends be kidnapped and not go after them uh, just because there was a rule that said maybe we shouldn't do this. So for I the re for the record, that since you were in the Star Wars, I think that uh, before Luke knew that Leia was his sister, he would have let Han Solo get get the beans spelled out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably not wrong on that one. Yeah. So, All right, so go ahead. Right off the bat, uh, in the episode, it does mention that the, those people reached out to the Federation. As soon as someone actually reaches out, Prime Directive no matter no longer matters. Okay, so then why did uh, why did uh, what's the the counselor Troy? Why did Counselor Troy tell him that we couldn't do it because of the violation of Prime Directive? I don't remember that part, but I could. No, be wrong. it's totally in there. I, I watched it twice. Do you know it was so, that episode was so bad? I watched it twice. It, it confused well, me so much. If if I may add, uh, I, yeah, I think absolutely. it is a case per case basis. Uh, although this might not be the best example of prime directive, the prime directive kind of applies here um, because if you look at the prime directive, many people think this is related to pre warp technology civilizations which in turn it does, but it applies to everyone. Kind of like how it would apply if a political person from one country visits another country and commits a crime. It's kind of like the same thing. The plight, the, 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 the yeah, prime like direction. No, no, no. I, I'm talking about... Like diplomatic uh, immunity, is that what you're trying to say? Kind of like, you know, everybody has their own rules. Um, yeah, okay. Like you'll notice the behavior or Starfleet um, within, you know, um, like say for example when you visit uh, Kronos, which is a Klingon world, uh, okay. it's completely different than if they go say for example Romulan or, or Romulus, or if you, if they go to a Vulcan planet Vulcan. Uh, even though those are members of the Federation, there's, there's a no slight Vulcan. There's no planet for the Balkans, remember? <laughs> Man, you're going to make me cry. Um, <laughs> Thanks, JJ Trek. Uh, yeah. So I, I don't know if I'm if I'm making any sense, but it, it is it is a case per case basis and depending on the planet and depending on the culture, dep depending on the situation. Uh, at once in the past it was said you know that that it was very fluid as a matter of fact i think it's still very fluid um it, it's an ever-changing um kind of like the, the 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 rules of a country and how you could get amend, amended as, sure. as cases come up so at the beginning um it was very fluid then they rein it in and said okay this is um as it is. And if you break it, that's it. And then after that, the Federation decided, okay, hold on a second. We have a lot of different scenarios coming in. So maybe we should change this rule. So now they have a, the, the it's, it's up to basically up to the captain, but he has to 
be able to defend his his uh, reasoning and his decisions on a board once he gets back to Starfleet. Okay. So okay. that that okay. board decides if he goes to jail or not. So in, in other words, in other words, which makes sense is that his his action has to be justified. Uh, to very justified. Exactly. It has to be okay, justified. So it's a moving target, but as long as he can justify his actions to the the Starfleet command board as to why he went against the the directive, the directive, it's whether or not he gets punished or allowed to continue as captain. Is that what and I'm understanding? Then- Correct. And let let me know if you agree with this, but on this particular episode, um, it was very delicate because it was more of a diplomatic mission than anything else because they needed that medicine. Right. So the, and this is, I guess, partly why everybody says this is the worst case scenario of a prime directive, because although it was applied to this whole scenario, it was you were more concentrated into what that diplomatic mission meant for the federation and 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 how many people would die from its failure okay you will also notice that throughout the episode they continued to show respect for this planet's culture correct um, i did notice that yeah so they they technically continued with Okay, we'll just play your game. We we will follow your rules since that's the rules you want to play by. And since they didn't want to play by their the Federation rules, they're playing by that planet's rules. And so them interfering is not actually interfering because it's part of their culture. And they just use their culture against them. Okay. So I think part of where my confusion in all of this comes in is that it's always been my understanding. And again, this is from a very non Star Trek understanding. So just bear with me here for a second. My understanding will always was that you couldn't interfere as long as the other culture. uh, Cause I think of like, um, what is it? It's uh, the JJ trilogy. The second one, the, the, the wrath of Khan remake. Cause I think of like, you know, there's the, the uh, planet where, you know, all the people, you know, coded in the white stuff and, you know, they're obviously a very primitive culture. And so they weren't supposed to interfere. So I think about that. And then to me, that that instance of the prime directive makes absolute sense, because here's, a, you know, a warp ship and this big, massive enterprise uh, federation ship that, you know, obviously these people have no way of contemplating what this is or what, you know, how they got from, you know, spears and bows and arrows to laser pointers and things that can go boom, you know? And so for me, that made sense. But in this instance, here's a group of people that were, you know, clearly of, and I understand the diplomatic portion of it. And I, and I understand that this is a bad example, but it's the only example I have right now because I'm still young into, into Star Trek. But here we have a people who have similar technologies to the 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 federation with uh, the transporting and everything else and i guess i guess for me i don't understand and i know that it's written in there it's very clearly in the prime directive you know that they cannot um uh that every the starfleet vessel and the crew are all expendable so i guess i i'm having a hard time understanding why the why the crew is so expendable, but yet the captain is able to put, he puts a high value on his crew, but at that point he just has to go. That's where I'm ha- I'm having trouble with the prime directive is, okay, so your crew is so awesome and, and so important to you until something goes boom. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, we got to leave them. Okay. Bye. I will tell you, you will, I, I as far as I'm aware, that does not happen. So it is in, it, it is written in that manner, I don't remember seeing a um, a specific scenario, but everyone is spendable, including the captain, when it comes down to the prime directive. But I mean, I, I guess that also is handled at a hierarchy level too, and that's where the divide is created too. Is like inside every starship, it goes up to the commander, but beyond that, then is the commander representing the whole crew. 
and being responsible for whatever his crew does. So it creates okay. also, it creates that division between accountability when when this comes to. Okay. All right. So Jesse's telling us that uh, Picard could have stopped what was happening to the people, but they could not interfere. Had uh, he had to not do anything, even if he felt it was wrong, it's a slippery slope. She was okay talking about another episode, symbiosis. Just so you know. Oh well, I still think it applies here in this in this comment as well for this for this episode because I can I'm trying to see how it could be a slippery slope uh, in Code of Honor uh, with the with the interactions with these people and, and making sure that that a I, you know and I, I think he did all he could to try and respect them and and everything and and trying to retrieve his 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 crew member. But like I said, I'm just I'm having a hard time understanding why the crew gets expendable over over people that you understand. What I, I'm having a hard I, time explaining. I, I, I get you, what but. you're saying. I get what you're saying. But when you look at it, let's put aside our our sentimental value for a person as a person. Look at them okay. as numbers, assets, and and liabilities. And basically, this this member of the crew became a liability the moment that he compromised the prime directive. So then you have to wage in uh, what's going to be worse, going there and actually put to risk this whole code of conduct for the life of one person that is going to affect a whole population. And he probably is going to take a whole different course as it advanced because of this interf uh, interference that they're going to have now with this community. You see, okay. so it's like when it's like saying, "Oh, I, I love this person, so I'd rather save him than than saving fifty people." But another person, I know this person is dead. Fifty people are more worth saving, you know. Okay, that's, that's the cold, the cold, calculative way, logical way to see it without being human about it. <laughs> okay, but that actually helps me because I'm looking at them at you know I'm look I'm watching the show and I'm seeing the relationships that Picard is establishing with each one of his crew members and um, everything everything else and to me so i'm watching this going okay so he's he's friends with all these people why isn't he fighting for his friends but okay so if, if i'm looking at them rather as assets and 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 a, just a number yeah you know uh as a numbered member of the crew in order to you're you're sacrificing the one for the good of the many that actually makes sense to me and i can i can wrap my head around that a little bit better than just going well, why the heck didn't you just go down their phasers of blasting and get his people back? Because clearly these people have weapons and transport machines. What the heck is going on here? Just you teleport know? it out of there. Right. <laughs> just transport her out. Make it go, oh, it's a miracle. Oh, my God. Right. That's why I didn't understand. Why didn't he just beam her out? I mean, they, they have transport ability. Why didn't he just like, you know? That's the thing. That's the thing. I just made a joke about it. Then these people are going to believe that we're gods or something. He was a god. He just vanished. It's a miracle. He's going to temper with the natural uh, evolution of this community until they reach a, a type of society advanced enough to become part of the enterprise uh, universe, you know, and be part of that, of, of the, of the groups and be on Starfleet ships and stuff like that. But I mean, I get what you're saying too, because that's also what uh, every show where you actually get to see interactions between a different kind of role characters, it creates that kind of like you invest yourself in them. So you don't want them to die. You don't want them to right. go off, or you want it at least if you're gonna die to be in some heroic way or something. That I, okay, I'm gonna remember you. You know. And, and look, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> five episodes in, I'm already well more invested in TNG than I ever was in TOS. So, uh. <laughs> I, I agree with this. I, I agree with Jesse's comment here. The the captain is responsible for his crew. Yep. It, 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 in everything that happens. Um, he has to figure out a way. And, and, you know, I like the way that Jesse, you know, worded that sentence. Mm -hmm. They had to trick the king into releasing Yard. So they got to figure out a way to save the, the, the crew member and not break, you know, not only the prime directives, but the rules of that, that world. Yeah. Um, okay. And what I wanted to add to that is, I have, we have seen this off camera, but it has happened now very frequently, where an entire ship becomes a liability and is lost to Prime Directive. Okay. Now wrap your hand around that, and it, if you still, consider for still, a ship still, like the N seventeen or one, it is over in between a thousand to six thousand people. Just 
wrap your hand around that, losing okay. a ship with all those people they had, um, families, kids, not, you know, s uh, civilian personnel as well as military personnel. Give to the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund. So, anyway. <laughs> 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 And, and I mean, Robert, just to expand bigger on what you're saying, still, that starship, it's actually spendable when you look at what it represents when it branches out to bigger things, the whole Starfleet Union. You know, if it's in between you choosing that starship is goner or it's going to break a code that might actually throw down a whole system. Trust me, the other starships are going to come to actually get rid of that starship and blow it up with everything inside of it. And you see, at the end of the day, it, 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 it's just hierarchies and it's a whole system uh, of conduct that it has to be kept in place so order exists too, you know? So that's why they are very pre uh, like tricky and very picky about tampering with it is because it's like trying to change the future or something, you know? It's like uh, the past. You go back and you change something, but it might actually have war, very, very worse repercussions uh, because of okay. that small little act. So and it's like a ripple cool. effect. That's exactly what you just said there is exactly the reason why the prime directed have been amend amended throughout the years. Yeah. And if you look at this episode in particular, they really needed to be careful because like they were saying, like many, many lives depended on this vaccine. They tried to replicate the vaccine just so they can just leave these people alone and just like not have to deal right. with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't replicate it because there was something very specific on this planet or about this vaccine that could only come from this planet and there's nothing else. So they had to follow their customs and do some things and trickery to be able to get these vaccines to the other people. And okay. Yep. That's about it. I, I so mean, to us, to us is seen as, as trickery. But if you look at it from a diplomatic uh, perspective, too, in other words, they're trying to speak their cultural language. Because uh, right, so they're, uh, the they're other paying day, honor to their culture. Exactly, yeah. and, and basically, and basically, it's like if they don't, if they don't try to to follow their their way of communication and their and their cultural ways, they're not gonna able, be able to even communicate or get to any consensus on why you should listen to me and why I had to bring here. And it's good for you. You know, it's like that old saying, you cannot help somebody that doesn't want to be helped. <laughs> right. Yeah. Even Jeremy here says that in, in discovery, they blew up the USS Glenn in order to keep their secrets. Thank you. So Jeremy. I'm assuming he means uh, the show discovery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I haven't gotten there yet, Jeremy. You should have said spoilers. No, I'm just kidding, buddy. It's, we're good. Uh, <laughs> it's been more than 24 hours, Tim. It has. It's, it's by my own rule. It's been actually my own rule is 72 hours, uh, but it's definitely been more than 72 hours. So I guess I can't get on Jeremy's case too much. No, thank you for adding that to the conversation, Jeremy. So, all right. So let me ask, let me ask you this. For those who are coming into the Trek world from outside, uh, you know, nerdiverses, am I the only one who's confused by the prime directive or is this universally confusing or am I just the only special kid in the back of the class going, hi, I don't know what's going on. I think you're focusing on the wrong aspect. Don't worry about the prime directive. <laughs> well, okay. But the prime directive seems, but it seems so central to the, everything that's going on. The problem yeah. is that if you think about it and you look how it's act upon and it's never the same, uh, the, the prime directive is a paradoxical directive. You know, because the, the fact that it's in there doesn't mean that you're going to follow it to the letter, to the T every single time. Uh, and just like Robert mentioned earlier, uh, it gets ad amended because it's part of our society and communities. It, it, we're ever changing and evolving and we have to adapt. If we don't adapt, we become stagnant and we'll find roadblocks. I want to I want to add in in contrast to what is has been said, um, I think that partly the reason why you're having such a hard time um, understanding the prime directive um, is due to the fact that we're not seeing you're not seeing this in a timeline order. And let me explain what I'm saying. Um, okay. I had this conversation with my wife, um, she, which, by the way, you all know, 
um, she started uh, watching everything in, in timeline order. Um, she actually asked me to do this because she got tired of me com- talking about it and she's being lost. And and some of she the things- did that. I don't believe it. <laughs> you, ask her. you ask her, dude. <laughs> and um, especially about the Prime Directive, right? And, and I think I know where you're coming from. And, and I have kind of like, let's see if I can explain this. But we're all the way out to episode 13 on on season one. I have done this multiple times. I think this is the first time um, that I am enjoying it because there's so much Trek now that you added to, I added to that timeline order list, which by the way, a lot of people ask me, how are you going to do that? Because some of the orders are, you know, it's impossible. Yeah, I, I, I made, <laughs> I made my own, you know, uh, uh, liberties in, in, in the order. But the thing is, because she's watching everything in order, like, let me see if I can bring this, this to perspective. Uh, the episode, um, I think it was called Dear Doctor. I think it was, well, regardless of what the name of the episode was, this is in Enterprise. Um, okay. there, there's a phrase where Jonathan Archer says, you know, someday my people are going to come up with some sort of doctrine, something that would tell us what we can and cannot do. I'm going to have to remind myself every, and I'm making this shorter and paraphrasing it, obviously. I'm going to make, I'm going to have to have to remind myself every day that we didn't come up here to play God. And, and, okay. and I found that very, um, really, really cool. in the fact that I get to see where it started. Then we fast forward to Strange New Worlds. I think, can remember the, the, the episode number. It might have been the, I can't remember exactly. But Captain, uh, Robert April says the console is not happy about it. They're doubling down, remaining it, renaming it the Prime Directive. So you're starting to see it form. And, and, and as you watch in order, you get to see what I was talking about, how it was all chaotic at the beginning. They're trying to be reactive to situations that were happening, especially in the T- TOS era. And as the situations were coming on, they were amending it. They got to a point where it was like, okay, this is ironclad. And then they they went back because now we have doctors um, and, okay. and, and people with ethical, really ethical dilemmas bringing us like you can't make this like the, the, the solid rule. This has to be malleable. So now Starfleet made it. So my point is in making this long story is that if you watch it in order, it might make it easier for you to understand because you could see when we did not have it, the issues we had when we created it, the issues we had and, and, and issues going forward all the way to like today's track. If if that makes any sense. No, actually it does because I think of, you know, um, sometimes it's easier to understand a law that's being, and that's basically what the prime directive is. It's a rule, it's a guideline, it's a law, uh, for the, the, the Federation. It's easier to understand it. If you're, if you're there, when it's being built, it's being made, you know, the intent behind it. So yeah, that makes sense to me and I can go, okay, well that makes sense. Uh, Jesse also says that I need to see more examples of when the prime directive is an issue throughout the series and you can kind of understand each situation differently. If that makes sense, that absolutely does make sense, Jesse. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the way, Jesse from Crusher Convo, if I hadn't mentioned that before, and go check out Crusher Convo. They're awesome. Anyway. I would like to add, I have not cared more about the Prime Directive than right now. Like, I've been able to watch Star Trek without actually knowing what the Prime Directive, like, is, per se. And just... Heresy! <laughs> okay. I, I knew what it was, but I just didn't care. Because it, it I felt it didn't actually... Like every time what I say, me. this is blasphemy you now. <laughs> me to want to be like, no, you must follow the prime directive. Or it's, it's, we have a bad boy here. <laughs> See, but I, I went, but I, I went into mean. Trek with the idea, the thought in my head, and maybe this is kind of where I, maybe I messed myself up with this. But I went into watching both, you know, because like I said, I'd only seen bits and pieces of Trek over the years. I had watched a couple of the movies. Um, 
I had watched a little bit of TOS it, it has reruns when I was a kid, that kind of thing. But only recently, within the last year, have I really gotten into any type of Trek at all. And so for me, it was going into this going, okay, so the Prime Directive is this all-encompassing thing. It, it affects everything that's going on. It affects everything that's, you know, and, and so, and then to, in my my understanding was it was only if the the uh, uh, the other culture mm-hmm was a subculture you know a, a third world type culture versus a first world type culture uh you know with, without the technologies and primitive and all those other things that made sense to me and then so to see these two cultures that were pretty you know pretty on par with each other and all of a sudden going well that violates the prime directive i'm going does it that doesn't make sense that is that's not a thing and so it was very confusing to me i have two examples if you don't mind me going forward into your your trek journey well wait, we've yeah. already kind of done that a little bit tonight so why not <laughs> the, the, uh. there's these examples are how can i say there's a debate let me put it this way so i'm sure uh, we might probably have a, a common war going with w- what i'm about to say but t- i guess this is on point to kind of help you understand um, you're familiar with the Klingons. Oh yeah. Okay. Warp. So the, the, the Klingons are it's still for the Federation there, you know, the prime directive applies even for the Vulcans, the prime directive applies. If you, if you look back, for example, and let's move on from my example, just in that, and I'll go back to it. Um, when the Vulcans first, uh, contacted humans right um they contacted humans after our first warp uh flight okay so for them i guess because every culture has their own prime directive it's only when you're a member of the federation who you had to follow that rule um they they contacted earth and they joined they, they did the first union of two separate planets and that's where history of starfleet started basically but um a lot of humans um got upset because and you could probably see this if you ever watch um enterprise um a lot of humans got upset because they're you know doing these things they are losing lives on their experiments on on space travel and we here we have the vulcans we who we know they're doing this successfully. They had thousands and thousands of years on space travel, not saying a thing and and, and actually not even wanting us to go out. Uh, as a matter of fact, just to get the NX-01 out of uh, space dock was a mission and a half because of the Balkans. And that's, by the way, okay. if you're not familiar to that's the first, the NX is, the, uh, is a uh, configuration given to um, ships that are uh, experimental. Only when they become okay. not experimental, they get the NCC, which you're familiar with the Enterprise. Sure. The, the N- NX-01 was the Enterprise. It was the first Enterprise. So in that aspect, it's kind of like the opposite, if you understand where I'm coming from. Uh-huh. The, the, the Vulcans didn't want to contaminate our natural progression into becoming what we are supposed to become. And if you think about it, it is a good thing that that happened because if they, for example, had meddled with us, we might not have the Starfleet that we have now. It might have been something completely different. You don't know, you don't know what would happen if they will change the natural evolution of our civilization. Exactly. Okay. Does that make sense? I think so. I'm trying and, and to. That's just the opposite to to the argument. I mean, I'll be devil's advocate to what Robert says, and I agree with the way that Vulcans act actually, because it's it's like they don't want our scientific evol- evolution to be uh, tarnished by their more advanced technologies. You know, they want us to get okay. there on our own, and that's why the Prime Directive would have actually been put in place here to and uh, being seen as a violation. You know. 
Okay. It's like you can call it as intergalactic capitalism because you're owner of the nicer car and you know how to get it. Doesn't mean that you have to tell me or bring me my nicer car to now because so I so I can drive like you drive. You know, you see, everybody has to okay. get their their own effort. So if you look at us as a, 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 a like a species as a collective, we are individual as each species at the end it, until we reach like that being, when we're in the same place. It's like okay. giving a Ferrari to a teenager. <laughs> There's a reason why most people that are driving super sport cars have gray hair. There you go. <laughs> uh, Jesse, again, from Crusher Convo says, we love Picard and Crusher I'm from TNG. We talk about, we talk a lot about them on Crusher Convo, and there is more than once a conflict between him and the Prime Directive and her with oh, yeah. her Hippocratic Oath. She goes, it's oh, great. Yeah. Go, Bev. If you haven't caught oh, on, yeah. they, she's talking about Beverly Crusher. Uh, that's why it's called Crusher Convo. She's a Bev head. So, uh, and, 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 and based on what she said, it, it is something that you're going to encounter a lot, anyone, and I mean anyone from the science division of Starfleet, anyone will always have an issue with the prime directive. Okay. So basically I need to learn to look at the prime directive as a, as a situation by situation, moving target based upon the captain's viewpoint and what he's willing to try and go to bat for with the Federation. Jack Sparrow said it best about, Oh boy. Pirate. The pirate code <laughs> is more of a guideline. <laughs> no, no, more really. like guideline. <laughs> okay. Let me, All right. So let me, I'm. Let me, see, I went into this looking at hard, fast. This is what it is. This is what it has to be. I, so I need to look at it as more of a, a, a moral flexibility guideline yes. based upon the morals of the whoever the captain is and what they hold yeah. as important. I think is that, that would that be I, accurate. That is. That's very accurate. And I think that another factor that might be actually hindering in how you receive this is when you say you are an old time Star Wars fan. Right. And Star Wars is a completely different uh universe and a completely different scenario because over there you are is black and white, is actually tyranny and then re <laughs> resistance. Right. There's, there's no good people, between. there's bad people, and the bad and people get, <laughs> get laser swords in their bellies. That's the way it works. Okay. There's exactly. a lot of gray area here. <laughs> the, uh... Well, and I'm okay with that as long as I understand that because I I think that like I said I think for me it was just the 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 initial understanding and going into this with such a rigid view of what the prime directive is and what the prime directive isn't that I that when we got to this episode instead of it being like a yield sign and going hmm wonder why why Picard did that it was a stop sign and me going what in the heck is going on? Why is this happening? What, you know, and it just, it was very confusing, almost kind of off-putting to me, um, you know, about what was going on in, in the episode in the series so far. But like I said, I'm five episodes in, I'm already well more emotionally invested in this than I ever <laughs> thought of being with TOS. So, um, although I like Spock and Bones, but you know, if, if Kirk could have been vacuum sucked out into space, I'd have been just as fine too. So uh, you kept mentioning her quote of the prime directive and, this is in the scene where um, Yar is like in a room or something, and by, and by the way, Picard and Yar, <laughs> Picard and Tor, uh, Troy are talking with her, <laughs> and Troy speaks up and says, "How simple all this would be without the Prime Directive." And so, yeah. and then Picard follows that up with, "Ah, that crossed my mind." Yes. And he um, is, so m maybe this particular planet does not have the weapon power that the Federation has. So sure. they could easily just walk in guns a-blazing oh. and hot solo it, but they... Which I would approve of. Right. So they could <laughs> easily just take the planet for themselves, but yeah. that's also not showing the respect towards their culture the and what they're doing on that well, planet. Okay. It, it's interesting you that, say that. That makes sense too. We we see if you watch Picard um I, I don't Tim I'm I'm sure you haven't you haven't watched Picard. I haven't watched a stitch of it. I, the only thing I've watched series-wise completely in full so far, I've watched season 1 of Strange New Worlds. That was my gateway drug. That's what got me interested in in Star Trek and going, well if I like this maybe I'll like some other stuff from Star Trek. Um, and then I went to, uh, I said, well, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it from the beginning and I'm going to sit down, I'm going to power through, uh, TOS. And I got to season two and I went, well, this is bumpkiss. We're moving on. And I went to TNG. So, well, there's a scene and I'll try to speak to it without giving too much, obviously, uh, 
you know, it, it's it's already old. So if you haven't watched it, there's technically no spoilers anyways. But I'm trying to go to the point that there's a scene or, or well, actually not a scene. It's not like an entire, you know, season uh, where you could see what the Federation would have been liked without the Prime Directive. Okay. And if you think about the Federation without the Prime Directive, you're looking at a um, a, an entity like the Klingons and the Romulans would would love to be, where they would just dominate the entire galaxy. Okay. And you got to see Starfleet in that light, and it wasn't good. Um, so that would be another aspect to see. Okay, what how important the Prime Directive is for Star Trek. Because it, it prevents Star Trek to be on becoming something like that. Because remember, the more power you have, the more you're going to get corrupted. Sure, absolutely. It has to be corrupts, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. Okay. All right. Well, I think that this conversation has been helpful. I think it's kind of pointed me in the right direction. It doesn't mean that, Robert, I won't send you messages from time to time going, what in the bloody hell did I just watch? Uh, <laughs> pretty sure that's going to happen. Still, I'm still trying to get, I'm still trying to get a foothold uh, in this Trekker verse and, and understand what's going on. And and like I said, for me, it's 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 a complete it, it's a complete uh, change of viewpoint and, and approach from anything that I've come from because you know I I watch like you know star wars and you know uh things were like that where if there's something wrong you just go and you you know blow it up and you walk away everything's fine so and that's not what happens here there's I'm there's, you, there's conversation discussion i'm not gonna call your team anymore i'm gonna call you space cowboy <laughs> <laughs> so exactly uh but yeah but yeah so it's just it's just you know getting my mind to to you know to rotate a little bit and see it in a different light and I think that for me is where where the challenge has been. But I think I think, like I said, I think that this has been a helpful conversation for me because it's helped me try and see the prime directive in a different, you know, instead of being the hard, fast rule as being the the morally flexible guideline dependent upon the captain and, and what's going on. <laughs> Jesse wants to know what's my nickname. Maybe don't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's see. There's Jesse and Michelle. They're from Crusher Convo. They're both call themselves Bevheads. I'm going to have to think about this one, Jesse, but we're going to come up with a good one. Don't you worry about it. I'll message you in the chat later. Anyway, okay. Can't spread this uh, It's not where you can piss him off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see. We've got, uh, uh, let's see. All right. So hey, let's shift gears real quick. We're, we're, running, we're uh, winding down on time here for our hour long live show that we do now looking forward to some of the coming show upcoming shows that we have for you on our Friday pre-recorded episodes. Uh, speaking of all things, Star Trek, we're very excited that this Friday we have Armin Shimmerman uh, from Star Trek's DS nine. He made it a nice. second trip back to the FSF podcast. Now, one of the reasons why we had Armin come back is number one, he's awesome. He really is. He's one of the smartest men I've ever met in my life. Incredibly, incredibly gracious and awesome. Uh, and then, uh, exactly. I'm glad you caught on to that. Uh, and then secondly, the what's that? I want something from the promenade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and then secondly, uh, uh, Armin has a new book that was just released. Uh, part of his uh, Il Il Ilaria series It's called Imbalance of Power. And we talk about that, his writing process, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and then also the following Friday, uh, this is where Nick's hint of strawberries comes in. Um, we release our interview with Jewel State. Also, you may remember her as Kaylee Fry from Firefly and Dr. Yeah. Jennifer Keller from Stargate Atlantis. Uh, so we have an opportunity to sit down with her and we we had just an absolute blast with both of those guys. And both of those interviews contain questions from you, our listeners. So make sure that if you submitted a question for them uh, to make sure you tune in and see if we mention you by name and use your question, uh, because if we did use your question, you got a shout out in the show. So. And last Friday, our guest was George Booza. George has been entertaining animation and live action audiences for years by bringing their favorite characters to life, like Beast, 
from the iconic X-Men animated series of the 1990s. We talked to George about his time on that show and how it's coming back to Disney Plus in the fall of 2023 as nice. X-Men 97 and how it's picking up right where the other episodes finished off. We also presented George with questions from our listeners, and he was more than happy to answer them as well. You can still find that episode of the FSF Popcast on our YouTube channel and our favorite audio podcast providers. Now, also, I just put this in the chat, and this will be down in the show notes down below, but there's an eBay link for this picture right here. This is a signed photo that George Booza sent to us, and you have opportunity to bid on this. Uh, and there's also one that you can buy just straight out. So there's two separate links for this. There's one that's a bid because we have two photos. One's a bid and one is an auction. Uh, but there you go. You see a nice up close with that really nicely done signature on the beast photo. Now, the, the cool thing about that is if when you bid on this and you win this auction, not only do you get that really cool signed George Booza photo, but 100% of the proceeds go to benefit an, a charity rather that is very near and dear to our hearts and that's called wish upon a teen wish upon a teen is a great organization based here out of michigan and what they do is they work with uh, sick kids in hospitals who have to stay for an, an extended period of time uh, for instance many of you already know this story but when my daughter had to stay 97 days in the hospital they came they redecorated her room to make it feel as much like her bedroom and a fun room as they can make a hospital room seem. But they bring them toys and they bring the, they brought my daughter um, uh, uh, an Amazon uh, Echo Dot so that she could listen to music because my daughter was paralyzed from the neck down, couldn't use her hands. And so she could at least call out to the Echo to listen to music and, and different things. And they brought her new sheets and lights and all these different things. They're a phenomenal organization. And over the last couple of years, because of the coronavirus and everything else, they've had to really scale back on uh, their charity functions and things because they do have so many sick kids and they have to be careful with them and getting them out and around these different things. So, like I said, 100 percent of your bid for this amazing George Booza signed photo goes to benefit that charity Wish Upon a Teen and helps them to continue to help out sick kids when they need it most. So you can either bid on it or you can go buy it directly. And uh, either way, 100% of the profits go to Wish Upon a Teen. Now, um, yeah. And as you see, at the, that, it just as one last final reminder, as you see on the, the banner down below, if you haven't already done it, please click like and surpri surprise. Yeah, like surprise! and subscribe. Surprise, you subscribe to our show. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> But yeah, please remember to click like and subscribe. It helps our show to continue to grow. We've been getting some amazing guests, uh, and we just mentioned a couple of them there. But we have so many more guests. We have Cal Dodd, who played Wolverine on X-Men and X-Men 97. Uh, yeah, he's the best to ever done it, bub. And he came, comes on the show, and he talks with us, and it is amazing as long as he can keep his earpods in. So... Uh, <laughs> that's fun. Uh, he's a really good dude, but uh, yeah... Um, yeah, so check that out. So stick well, with us had, the next couple of years. years. Uh, his, yeah, his uh, his ear pods kept falling out, and he was having some issues. <laughs> and so. I think Apple has a thing or a setting or something where, like, when you take it out, it disconnects you from a call. So he like oh. constantly like kept. So he would drop it. out. He would have to come back. It's going to be a feat of editing, but it'll be fun. <laughs> uh, but yes, and Jesse, absolutely, X Men does rule. So, um, oh, you know what? I just figured out what I'm going to call Jesse. Because she loves Beverly Crusher, who's a redhead, and there's an X-Men with red hair. You are rogue. Okay, there it is. Jesse is rogue. All right. Uh, but Hey, before we say goodbye to everybody, Robert, Gio, remind everybody where they can find you out on the things. Robert? Well, we are Science Fiction Remnant, and we talk sci-fi. And yes, all sci-fi. And you can find us everywhere. There you go. And if you still have any questions as to what everywhere is, please message him. You can find him at uh, on Twitter as at sci-fi rem, uh, remnant. And uh, you can message him, ask him questions. They do a lot of interaction on there. They're, they're a bunch of chatty Cathy's with their, with their Twitter hashtags and, and things. Make, You'll have a lot of fun with them. Make sure you like and surprise there too. So. Yeah, exactly. Like and surprise, uh, surprise sci-fi remnant as well. <laughs> so, 
All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for tonight. For those who stuck in for the whole show, thank you for hanging out. Hope uh, that this was as informative to you guys as it was to me, but you guys are probably not Star Trek noobs and didn't need to have your hand held to get walked through what the Prime Directive (laughs) is and what the Prime Directive isn't. But uh, thank you to Robert and Gio for coming along and helping us to explain it. And Nick, thank you for being patient with me and uh, not laughing every time you tried to answer one of my questions. So, (laughs) all right, guys. That's going to conclude it for us. Thank you so much. Until next Ciao. time. Goodbye. Oh, hey, and remember, next Monday is our site as our Star Wars RPG, our our, uh, our two and a half hour special edition, extra fun live show. Come back for that. You guys are going to make sure uh, that you're going to want to be there for that. Anyway, and bye, Jesse. Thanks for coming in. Thanks bye. for uh, for your uh, interactions as well. All right, now I mean it. Goodbye. Ciao. On behalf of the rest of the hosts of the FSF podcast, we want to thank you for listening to this episode. If you'd like to be a guest on a future episode, please contact us by means of Twitter or Instagram using the handle at FSF Podcast or go to www.fsfpopcast.com and click on the contact link. Thanks again and hope you enjoyed the episode.